How's your sweet level going guys? Sweet Cookie 500 here and welcome to Monster Prom. Now I know what it says on the screen. Please ignore that. I had gotten the Monster Prom franchise package, which also includes the Monster Prom Second Term DLC. So that's why it says Monster Prom Second Term. I haven't played the first game. Frankly, I don't want to jump the gun and play the DLC. And I don't want to play Monster Camp until I finish Monster Prom. So without further ado, let's just play. Voice interjections, yay or nay, awesome voice effects, or make your own voices. Hmm. What do we want to do? Uh, I guess we can make our own voices. Why not? Major respects to everyone that did do the awesome voice effects, though. Like, major respect for them. Let's go. How many of you are there? It is just me. Select game mode. First term, second term. We are going with the first term. How long do you want to play? Short game? Around 30 minutes. Full game? 60 minutes. Let's go full game. Ah, spooky high school. The sweetest years of our lives. Back then we were young and unafraid. Sometimes reckless, sometimes brilliant, sometimes just stupid. But always willing to live life to the fullest. We were on a wild journey to discover who we really were. Who are you? Oh, who am I? Uh, I do I look like the- I, I guess I look like her the most. I, she looks cute, though. Alright, yes, I'll go with the cute one. We'll go with the cute hunk of me. Who are you, really? We'll use a custom name. We will go with... Easy. B. Pronouns. Uh. Lego! And yet, we had yet to experience its ultimate challenge the Monster Prom. I remember it clearly. Six weeks were left, and as fast. I remember it clearly. Six weeks were left, and as we fantasized about our dream prom date, we were all scrambling to catch the attention of one of our six most charismatic classmates. Miranda Vanderblit. B built. There we go. Miranda Van- Miranda Vanderbilt. 19. A sweet mermaid princess who was as cute as she was genocidal. Damien LaVey. 21. A fearless demon with a taste for destruction and a love of fire. Scott Howell. Ha ha. 21. A werewolf athlete who compensated for his rather small brain with a stupidly huge heart. Liam de Lioncourt. For... Unknown. He's over 400 years old. A hipster vampire whose standoffish demeanor hid that he was truly a lovable dork. Poly... <laughs> Polygeist. 22. A party ghost with an insatiable hunger for all the wrong things. And Vera Oberlin, a mean, self-made Gorgon with a merciless sense of business. It was clear. It had to be one of them. But who? We only had six weeks to choose our prom date. And even more daunting, we only had six weeks to woo them and conquer their heart! <gasps> the shocker! But as I already said, we were young and unafraid. And we were ready to start! I mean, I was young and unafraid. There's only me. There's only one of us. Welcome to Monster Prom's stupidest pub quiz ever. All minds are rotten, but they are rotten in so many different ways. Worry no more, we're now using our PhD in bullshit to diagnose what kind of deviant sicko you are. Monster Prom's stupidest pub quiz ever, TM, will throw a bunch of absurd questions at you and turn your answers into your character stats. This way, each of you will start by having stats that better reflect your true selves. Well, one of you anyway, there's only one of you lonely bastards out there. Let's start! Which is the coolest mythological creature? A sphinx who's super turned up and ready to party and she wraps all her riddles. She still kills you if you don't answer them correctly, but she wraps the riddles. The red creature I do when I was six and which is clearly super derivative from my other mythological creatures. But it's super cool and it's my OC and my spirit animal, okay? The invisible hand of the free market! Um... I'll go with this one, I guess. Oh, so creative! 
you wish you were raised by a pack of wild wolves, which also happen to be tech moguls who own some sort of the most profitable companies of Silicon Valley. They would be kick-ass role models and wild wolves! Sick! A mysterious old man who saved me from the streets in order to raise me as his disciple in the ancient ways of Radjing. DJing. Oh, there's the guy now. A really progressive marriage between a kick-ass venomous snake and actual fire. I love fire, and I see no issue with being raised by it. I believe the old de ma mysterious man. Ah, so <laughs> what would be a deal breaker for a potential lover? The person's a coward. The person hates the outdoors. The person being old. The person boring. The person likes manners. The person likes taste. Hmm. 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 Because the person likes manners. Ah. Did I already get points for the uh, mermaid princess? What was her name again? I forgot her name. I'm gonna be a great lover. <laughs> it's me! I got five bucks. Wow. Ooh. Okay, here we go. Where do I wanna go? Uh, I'm just gonna. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Guess I'm going to the auditorium. Oh, she's cute. That day, while rehearsing for the class play, it's as though the muses themselves have descended to give you figurative oral sex. Your performance is intense and inspiring. It will be remembered for generations, which is pretty rad by high school play standards. You gain two creativity. You see Liam talking to Miranda. Miranda looks confused, and Liam looks frustrated. Uh-oh. I simply do not understand this- Ah, okay, here we go, here we go. Okay, okay, let me just adjust my seat. Here we go, Princess Daisy looking bitch. But I simply do not understand this art you are describing. You say that the art piece is... A bathroom? No, no, no. For the hundredth time, the art piece is the experience of going into a bathroom, thinking it's an art piece. The artist purposefully gave the room number of the bathroom as the room number for the exhibit, even though there was a whole room full of his paintings elsewhere in the building. It was revolutionary. It certainly seems very complicated. Personally, I prefer the exoplanet sculptures of the Atl Atlantean Fifth Dynasty. You know, the man in the moon, the face on Mars, all of Pluto, art on such a grand scale! Bah, that's not art. That's populism at its worst. Well, I don't think that bathroom business sounds like art. But how are we supposed to discuss art if we can't even agree on what it is? Oh, if only someone would come along and provide a satisfying definition of art, I would be so pleased! You've got this, no problem. It's so simple. Ah. Uh, I feel like neither of them would agree on me on this one. By the way, I'm panicking because these two- Why did I pick the auditorium? These two are great already, what the fuck? I mean, the first one's true. Second one is not as true, but it is still true. I think. I don't know. Uh... You know what? Uh... I I do agree with the second one because art is expression of perspective and perspective makes you feel like shit sometimes, so please don't get mad at me and whoever this disagrees with. No. Yeah, exactly. This is why, for example, George Stewart's A Sunday Afternoon is not art, whereas getting stuck in an elevator for nine hours is. But the face on Mars does not give me bad feelings. Well then, obviously, it's not art, Miranda. I'm trying to keep up. If it's not art, then what is it? A main thing your ancestors did to the Martians with primitive nuclear weapons. Oh, yes. I suppose it was that. You're both so smart. You gained some disturbing knowledge about the history of the solar system, and also two smarts and one creativity. <laughs> oh, Miranda! I love you! Week one, noon. Ah. 
Do I have to choose where to sit? Uh, I'm not cool enough to be with the hipsters. I'm not partying. Ah, I don't know! Miranda! Let's sit with Miranda. As usual, Miranda sits before her immaculate array of carefully arranged silverware. Damien predictably is examining her biggest knife. So this is the one for killing people, right? What? Good heavens, no! This is the butter dagger! It would be unseemly to use it on meat. So what then? Am I supposed to use this scrawny looking knife to kill a dude? No, no, no. If you simply must kill someone with a meal, it is customary to use the fish knife. This is merfolk. This is merfolk called silverware, after all. That tiny thing? I might as well wait for my victim to die of old age. That is usually how it's done in my kingdom. Yes. That or poison? This is ridiculous. You. You there. Which knife would you use to kill a guy? And don't see the fish knife. <laughs> I want to so heavily agree with Miranda with the fish knife. But a spoon. Reminds me of this one video about like this guy who's like the most useless murderer with the most useless murder weapon, and that murder weapon was a spoon. So I'm gonna have to go with the meme on this one. Holy shit! That's so much more metal. Why didn't I think of that? I guess when the only tool you have is a knife, every problem looks like a problem you should stab with a knife. Thank you for opening my eyes to the world of silverware-related murder. But which spoon? This is very important! Do you mean the teaspoon, or the dessert spoon, or perhaps the caviar spoon? No, no, no. Not all appropriate. What about this spoon here? The one with the jagged edges on it. Oh, you mean the murder spoon? Of course not. That's for hard-boiled eggs. Damien nods thoughtfully, but pockets the spoon when Miranda's not looking. Looks like this school's about to get a lot messier. Oops. Week one evening. Oh, someone's at the library. Let's go to the library. Welcome to my little shop. Buy some shit. I have shit that will boost your stats, shit that will le lead you into stupid new adventures, even some shit that might be much needed at some very specific moments. So, take a look. A PR agent. High school social life is so hard nowadays that hiring a PR agent is totally a thing. Six dollars. The gift that keeps on giving, seeing I'm wise enough to know when a gift when a gift needs given. Yeah. Oh, it's zero dollars. A very good salad, it will make you laugh big time. Huh? Okay. Okay, so she's like the bathroom lady. No, no, bathroom lady. Okay, she is the bathroom lady now, but. Hi, oh, stranger, it's been a while. I missed you. It's okay, you can look at my stuff. Too poor for this. A pack of, <laughs> of regular cocaine. Good old cocaine. In these times of weird experimental substances with horrible side effects, cocaine has become the new vanilla of drugs. Event! A corpse. Yeah, I'm selling a corpse. It's like some kind of fashion accessory. It is not as if I'm trying to dispose of it. Motivational poster. Crafting your art requires years of hard work, education from great mentors, and tons of raw talent, but damn, that sounds exhausting. So let's settle for a motivational poster for now. Creativity. Happy little accidents. A sexy fake Latin accent? Why? The hottest thing is being yourself, honey, but a Latin accent is close second to BH. Some impractical yet kind of funny glasses. Remember when they used to be cool? Now they aren't. But they're so ridiculous that they're still fun in their own twisted way. A fake badass tattoo. It has flames and a skull and even a knife. Which this, you can murder your enemies, go to prison, make everyone your bitch, and then murder them too. And go to some kind of super prison? Street cred plus 900. A Russian novel with an insightful approach to universal matters such as love and death. Are you sure about this? You can always use online encyclopedia TM to get the general idea and still be able to act as if you've read it. A tampon used by the <laughs> Oh my god. You know, for good old blood rituals, or in case you're a creep with unhealthy obsessions, don't even dare ask me how I got this. Ew. 
A penguin mask. You want this, you sick pervert? I have no idea you appreciated a good old reverse Romanian Wilkinson. I must admit, it's kind of hot you're into that kinky shit. Thanks. Blanket with two holes. Literally just a white blanket with two eye holes in it. You'd have to be an idiot to mistake this for a ghost costume, but most of our classmate are, classmates are idiots. That's true. You get that the whole point of running a business like this is sells to people, right? I think you're missing the point, sweetheart. I missed a- Fuck off! Uh... Oh, there's more people to sit with over in that area. Um... Uh, I'll go sit... Let's sit here. Why not? You take your seat between the strongest and smartest men you know. Liam appears to be taking a very intense picture of some bizarre looking food. Scott is looking about as confused as you are currently. But Liam, food's delicious. It's for eating. That's why they call it lunch time. Neither of those statements is wrong, but they also aren't quite connected. Scott, if I had the capacity to eat, I assure you, I would still ignore the actual content of the food in favor of finding the perfect combination for a flawless moment gram post. Oh, I see. You're gonna post a picture to advertise the food to people who can actually eat it. <laughs> You're so smart. I'll be happy to eat your food for you. I'm afraid your palate is way too unsophisticated to appreciate these rare Japanese delicacies. Ooh, they're Japanese. Do you have any Scott snacks? Scott snack? You know what? Fine. I've taken all the pictures I need. Eat whatever you want. Thanks, Liam. Ooh, they all look so yummy. I don't know where to start. Izzy B, any ideas? <laughs> Maybe your choice of a snack can get one of these boys to want to snack on you. In an innuendo way. Not literally. <laughs> Obviously the lynch fruit flavored custard with a side of tofu and a drizzle of raspberry extract and the most superior food on the most superior food on the plate. Go for the brightly colored bag of meat biscuits that somehow has an anime drawing of Scott's face on it? That says Scott snacks? <laughs> I, what am I gonna do? I need to I need to actually woo someone, so. Uh, what would I say? Oh, I just realized he has bite marks on his arm. Oh my god, that's that's clever. I like the cleverness. Ah. Oh my god, I love Scott. What the fuck? Uh, okay, I'm any mini mini mo catch a peanut butter toe if you let go any mini mini mo. We're going with the Scott snacks, guys. Yes, you do have Scott snacks. Scott snacks. What does that mean? How is this possible? Why is your face on an obscure Japanese biscuit brand? Is that really you? Oh yeah, totally. There was this one time where I was- well actually it was a full moon so I'm not really sure exactly what happened. But somehow I ended up hanging out with these really cool Japanese businessmen the whole evening. But- but how- what even- yeah, I guess they saw me practicing a few sports moves, and they saw how strong and fast I was, and they wanted to show how their meat treats are strong and fast. So they asked me if they could use me as their new mascot, and I said, of course! And then the Scott Snacks became a hit, and now I'm kind of famous in Japan. Thanks for pointing out the Scott Snacks to me, Izzy B. It's nice to know you want to see my face. I want to see yours, too! How is he so muscular and so adorable at the same time? Maybe one day you could put your faces together. It's the evening. See who's in class right now. A good. What about the library? Let's see who's in the library. The day you spent some time on the library's PCs playing some good old online poker. Gambling seems like a stupid and dangerous decision, but who cares? This time it's paid off, so fuck it. You gain two dollars. That's shit. Two fucking dollars. But Liam isn't paying attention to any of that. He corners you afterwards to lecture you with moment gram filters. What, he, he put, like, you know the anime wall thing where, he, you know, hands go either side of the person on the wall? Did he just corner me to a wall and just pull up his phone like, I want you to look at moment gram filters with me. Won't you look at moment gram filters with me? 
his outfit is on point. I must admit. What no one seems to understand about filters is that they're not about making pictures better. They're about making pictures browner and harder to see. That's why I use my own proprietary filter for almost all of my photos. Infinite top. Top? Or two? Uh, uh, we're gonna go with top on that one. It's also probably why I have only six moment gram followers, but we all must make sacrifices for our art. In any case, I have to go. There's a dead rat in the parking lot. I simply must document. Are you gonna eat the rat? Rat. As soon as Liam's gone, Miranda peeks out of an air conditioning dump. Miranda, what the fuck are you doing, girl? Goodness, the situation's even more dire than I thought. If Operation Make Liam Popular Again is to succeed, we must get started immediately. What's that? Why, yes, of course you're part of my operation. I unwillingly force people into my service all the time. Of course, Your Majesty. Anything for you, my queen. Oh, you want to know why it's called Operation Make Liam Popular Again? Well, he's been alive for, like, centuries, right? I'm sure he must have been popular at some point. I'll check the history books later. There's no time now. Please... Phase 1 is getting Liam more Momentgram followers. I took the liberty of having my royal spies discover the password to his account, so we can give it a total makeover. But what to do? <laughs> Use the account to post a bunch of porn and bomb recipes. Pay a million homeless people to follow Liam. <laughs> oh. <my God. laughs> oh. Eh, sure. Pay the millions, you know? Not so wealthy. Ah, oh, fuck off. Oh yes, solving problems with money is my family's specialty. Unfortunately, Father cancelled my credit cards after I had all those land ponies shipped to our underwater castle and they drowned. But I'm sure you have enough money to accomplish this feat. You totally don't. You decide to cut costs by hiring goats instead of people. But ghosts don't have thumbs or smartphones, so instead of having them follow Liam a moment, Graham, you just have them follow him in real life. Ah! Where did all these goats come from? Get them away from me! They ate my cash from your phone, Tozy! This is madness! Excellent, Liam. Pursued by goats. This was a terrible idea, and also goats are still pretty expensive. You lost two creativity and one money. Fuck you! Goats are great! Maybe not so much if they scream at you all the time. Okay, where do I go next? I've been to the auditorium. Been to the bathrooms. Well, unofficially. Uh I've only been to the library. Uh let's check what's happening outdoors. That day during recess, you start a half hour array that goes full crazy. Look at me go! You have no idea how it escalates so much, but at one point there were like 300 people. Someone summons demons from a nightmare dimension. The consequences might distort the fabric of reality itself, but who cares? It's a red party! You gain plus two fun. You notice Liam why the fuck am I changing? I don't know Liam's in these places, I swear! You notice Liam and Polly taking a break from the rave, you dance over to join them. Yo! We were just talking about the insane music festival we're going to this weekend! You're going, right? Shit, you forgot to get tickets. They're probably all sold out now, and there's no way you can afford to pay a scalper. Obviously, you tell them you're going, though. You never let the truth get in the way of ta talking to hotties. Hell yeah. Yes! I can't wait! All my favorite bands are gonna be there! Boo Radley, imagine a fucking dragon, an actual dead mouse! Personally, I'm most excited about Veggie Scales. Their lead guitarist is a cucumber. It's never been done before. Hello, friends! What are we talking about? Is it a grand ball? Oh! Um, sort of? It's like a grand ball, except everyone is more naked, and the dancing is sexier, and there are a lot more drugs. What is... drugs? You know what? You wouldn't understand. It's a peasant thing. No, wait. This is perfect. If you can convince Liam and Polly to invite Miranda to the music festival, maybe she'll cover your ticket too. <laughs> what do I do? Do I be sly? Or do I be like, you know, you might give us diplomatic immunity? Hmm. We'll just do this one. If a party happens in the forest and there are no party virgins to be bewildered by it, is it really a party? Well, neither of us are virgins. Nah, being a virgin is so last century. You know what that means, Liam? 
that we should hope being a virgin doesn't become cool again since we would have to come up with a way to re-virgin ourselves? What? No! It means we're taught. Oh. What? No! It means we're taking Miranda to the festival! Hooray! I'm overjoyed despite still not knowing what it is we're doing! Oh, yes, of course. I can't wait to teach her how to complain about the sound mixing and lineup. And I can't wait to show her the molly pit! Don't you mean the mosh pit? Oh, Liam, sometimes you're cute. You all ditch the rest of your class to explain music festivals to Miranda. It takes eight hours, 12 diagrams, and an elaborate puppet show, but she finally is ready to party. You gain two fun and one creativity. Hell yeah! Who do I want to sit with? I kind of want to sit... You know, I'm, I'm yet to meet this gal right here. I know... Why not? I, I, I gotta meet her anyway. You approach Lyrium and Vera's table to find them, thoughtfully tasting several glasses of wine. This school has literally no rules, apparently. Ugh, wine. The most, the most exclusive of beverages. Even a vampire such as myself cannot resist its class in a lure. Do you know a lot of wine? Do you know a lot about wine, then? I'm having dinner with the King of France next week, and I could use some pointers. France doesn't have a king anymore. That's what the media wants you to think. So, do you know about wine or not? Alas, in my centuries of living, I've only learned how to look good holding wine, not how to evaluate it. All I know is that I'm not drinking another glass of that one. Vera points at the bottle with Polly's Toilet and Wine written on it in per permanent marker. What I wouldn't give for an experience. Mm, uh, what I wouldn't give for an experience sommelier to help us judge which wine is the best. You know nothing about wine, but you're pretty sure most sommeliers just make stuff up anyway. You suavely recommend... Lord is Sangria. It's paired well, it pairs well with seafood and blood. The tannins is this, in this robust smell of Nice taste of poison. Perfect for diplomatic dishes. Let's be fancy. I kind of want to impress her. Why would you want to disguise the taste of... Oh. You're going to poison someone? Of course you are! You're always poisoning someone! Quiet! No, I'm not. People in no way directly associated with me are always poisoning people. And soon they will strike again. France has suffered under its unjust king for too long. Plus he called me fat at a party once when I was 11! What's this king you keep talking about? I'm telling you, France doesn't have a king anymore. Soon, Leo. Soon. Vera is so thankful to you for solving her problem, for solving her assassination problem. She lets you braid her snakes. You get bit a few times, but it's so, so worth it. How do you braid snakes? Wouldn't that hurt? Or something? Okay, so I've been to the auditorium, I've been to the library, I've been outdoors. Uh, let's go to class. The day you listen to your elders and learn valuable lessons. Sometimes, after all the monster nonsense and the dating gimmicks, you forget that attending class is supposed to be the primary activity at this high school. You gain two smarts. Oh, we learned something. Sweet mother of tits! Why is Liam everywhere I go? You hang out afterwards to impress Liam with your sweet moment grand filters. You're really making some headway when... Never fear, board teen. I'm here to rescue you from the drudgery of high school. <sighs> I suppose your heart's in the right place, but I'm afraid there's no experience or novel enough to conquer my limitless anyway. Not even marrying an interdimensional prince? Hmm. No, not even that. What about marrying an interdimensional... <laughs> what about marrying an interdimensional prince? Ironically. My god, it's so disruptive. It may be the most disruptive thing ever. No, it seems the princess bewitched Liam with his idiotic proposal. All is lost until you can think of something even more disruptive to marry. You son of a bitch. What if he's a siren? That, that would- <laughs> A unicorn with a toilet on its head. Um. Gah, uh, how do I save this man from making the worst mistake of his life by marrying young? <laughs> well, I suppose he's not young, but still. Um. The concept of marriage itself is disruptive. Boom. But you can't marry marriage? 
Maybe you can't. But that's only because you do possess- Oh, maybe you can't, but that's only because you do not possess the soul of a poet. Don't you see the brilliance of this scheme? Um, no. Marriage is monogamous. If I marry marriage, then no one else can marry. It's the most disruptive marriage of all. So long, posers. I'm off to deflower a precious social construct. This will surely put a stop to the prince's practice of proposing marriage to random high schoolers. As soon as Liam figures out how to actually marry an abstract concept. Meanwhile, you gain two creativity and one smarts. I smarts. Sorry, princey. They're all absolutely hunks of meat. Thank you for opening my eyes to the world of silverware. To silverware! I can't speak! Tamaki, is that you?